Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and if you can't tell from either seeing my last houseplant haul video or just by seeing this box full of plants behind me here, I have a lot of repotting to do, so today we're just going to sit back, relax, and repot some plants. It's been a long time since I've done a video like this, and clearly I am long overdue to repot, so let's go ahead and get started. Typically when I bring plants home, I like to let them acclimate to my home for roughly a week or two just to be sure that they're going to be okay with my home's setting. Keeping in mind the greenhouses where these plants grew are... Uh, they have a lot more humidity, a lot more air movement, a lot more sunlight than my home has to offer, so I do need to be really mindful of that. And to help out with that, I like to use a much more well-draining soil mixture. This is all-purpose soil with perlite added to it, so it's roughly two parts, maybe three parts all-purpose soil to one part perlite. Perlite is the white puffed volcanic rock that you see here in here. And as I said, this is going to keep my soil well draining. It's going to keep it more lightweight and aerated. And this is just going to keep me from overwatering my plants. It's going to keep them from staying too wet for too long. And that is just the number one way that we kill our plants overwatering. So this is just going to help me with that a lot. So we're just going to slide on back. We also have a large selection of pots that we can choose from today. So it's that's rather exciting. And I also have this bucket here by Centurion. This is their collapsible bucket that they just released. This is, uh, Centurion is a brand of gardening products that I really enjoy using in my home. And this bucket is for sale at Target. And I'm also gonna leave a link in my description below for where you guys can go ahead and purchase this. But as I, as I said, this is collapsible. So it shrinks down to nothing. As you can see, it's the size of a Frisbee and just as easily storable as one. Um, so they definitely kept in mind both uh, small spaced gardeners and gardeners on the go in mind when they created this. And it's made from heavy duty, high quality silicone that is non-porous. So while we want our soil mixture to be very porous, we do not want our bucket to be porous, specifically if we're going to use a liquid because you could use this for like cleaning instead of gardening. Of course, I'm using it in my home for gardening, but you could use this for practically anything that you use a bucket for, but it's just fantastic for uh, it's easily being stored. It's just fantastic. I love it. So today, um, I'm going to use it for dumping my soil scraps in because I'm going to have a lot of excess soil that I'm going to need a place to put it. But I also use this in my home for just mixing up my soil too if I'm going to need a large amount of soil since this is a rather large bucket. So I just am head over heels for this. It's a really wonderful bucket. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started with potting some plants. So we're going to pick out here, we have this Philodendron Bloody Mary, I guess is going to be the first one uh, with the luck of the draw. It's got these dark spade shaped leaves. I'm really excited about this. So let's just go ahead and start by just taking this out of the plastic pot and getting some of the soil off of it. I think this is a good amount of soil to take off. We have a nice amount of the root ball showing and just a little bit of the growers mix left on the, the plant. And let's go ahead and just pick out a pot real quick. Give me one moment. Get ourselves a little more situated here. And you could use a garden trowel, you could use a spoon. I like to use a spoon sometimes, but sometimes I even just like to keep a little grower's pot handy in my, my soil mixture because I think it's just really easy to pot up with. Ooh, I think this was definitely the right choice. The red pot with the purple black leaved plant. I think this is, this is a look and I am all for it. One thing I think is really important when you're repotting plants is to go around the perimeter of the pot and kind of just be a little bit more aggressive, if you will, in the way that you push down because you want to not necessarily compact the soil, but you want it to be um, not loose. This looks so perfect in this red pot. It's as if it was meant to be. I am so obsessed with it. I knew when I got this plant, this Bloody Mary philodendron, that I had to find a, a pot that matched it perfectly. I didn't want to just put it in like terracotta or like white, although it would totally stand out in white. I just really wanted to kind of uh, play with this uh, dark leaved plant that you just don't normally see. It's not very common that you see something with this dark of foliage or red foliage, that as well. Specifically with indoor plants, when you're working with outdoor plants that can take a lot of light, you get a lot of fun colors, but when you're working with indoor plants, it's really a lot of green, so it's really exciting when we stumble upon something that's not just a plain green plant. Speaking of which, uh, we have this philodendron right here, which is probably standing out the most out of this box, since it's definitely the largest plant in there. So let's replant this one next. This is a philodendron imbi. Variegata, yes, philodendron imbi variegata. I think sometimes they might refer to this as the Jose Buono philodendron. And I've had this one growing for me for just a couple of months now, and it's put off a few new leaves, as you can see, um, compared to when I first showed this plant in one of my houseplant hauls. So I'm really excited to finally go ahead and repot this plant. So just go ahead and 
dump the soil out and I'm just gonna remove the rice holes on top and some of this uh, soil mixture here, which is just perhaps a little too heavy for my liking, if I will admit. I would like to get it down to a more porous mixture, as I was saying, with a lot more perlite added to it. But we have a really nice root system here. There is a lot of roots, as you guys can see. So I think we might be better off going for a little bit of a larger pot. This is a very special plant to me, and uh, I really like these pots with the added texture to it. So I think this might be the winner. I think this is what we're going to go with. Alrighty, hopefully I'm making the right decision. I'm going to pull off gently this little bit of yellow growth here that just kind of easily snapped off with a little bit of pressure. So let's just go ahead and get a little bit more of this soil off because I would really like to get it in my soil mixture, specifically because I'm planting it in such a porous terracotta pot. I would really like it in my mixture. Let's get our pot ready and situated. And typically I like to put just a little scoop of soil in to get started before I put my plant in just so the roots just aren't immediately touching the bottom of the pot. Um, and if the hole, hole is too big, you can use like bonsai mesh. But what I typically do is just take a large piece of orchid bark if I have it handy and just cover the hole up there because it'll still allow water to, to pass through. Filling up our pot here with our well-draining soil mixture. Alrighty, so here is our philodendron imbi variegata potted up in its planter, which I'm very excited about. I've had this plant for a little while now and I'm really excited to have it in a pot finally. I think it looks fantastic. I can go ahead and get rid of the scrap here from the philodendron that we had taken off. This looks fantastic. I am so into this. Alrighty, let's put this one aside. Or let's, let's put it back here. Let's enjoy this one. We'll enjoy it a little bit more. Okay, let's move on. Let's go ahead and repot this Monstera Standalayana variegata. I think I had mentioned in my house my haul video that I was gonna get a moss pole for this, but I totally forgot. So we're gonna go ahead and just pot it up for now and I'll, I'll save room in the pot for the moss pole. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of its soil. Ooh, this has some really nice roots. Before I even take the soil off, I wanna show you guys how good this root system looks. So this is a really, really healthy plant. So let's go ahead and get the rest of these rice holes off. We're going to be pretty gentle with this guy, because this is a very special plant to me. Alrighty, we have most of our soil off, and we have some really healthy roots that I think is, is going to really like uh, the soil mixture that I'm going to give it. I think this color plant is just dying for these dark pots, and this root system is pretty big, so I'm thinking this is going to be the more appropriate pot than the smaller... A uh, thicker terracotta pot that I have right here. Although I do absolutely love the way that this looks. Like, I'm obsessed 100% with the way that this looks. Oh, I want to pot it in here so bad. But from these roots, I just don't think I'm going to have that much time in this pot. I don't think I'm going to get to enjoy it for longer than six months to a year's time before I'm going to have to go ahead and actually get the plant out of the pot already and repot it once again. So I might as well just save me that step and pot it in this pot right here. And I'm also gonna, as I mentioned, probably pot it a little bit more towards the center and allow me some space to put a moss pole because I can tell from the way that this one's growing that if I just placed a moss pole, just I'm trying to hold it up, just like right against here, this thing would just start climbing up that moss pole and would just grow to my ceiling if I allowed it to. So I'm really, I think I'm really gonna try that. So that is something I am gonna keep in mind. So let's go ahead and get our soil. Get our bucket handy in case we need to make a mess. And go ahead and put a little soil down in our pot here. Situate our Monstera Standaliana inside here. Give you guys a little bit of a better look. I feel like I keep looking up and then my head's like cut off, so I'm trying to stay a little bit lower, but I'm slouching a little bit here. Filling up our pot with our well-draining soil mixture. I'm realizing now that all of these plants that I have potted up so far are all aroids, or plants that fall into the Araceae family of plants, which includes Monsteras and Philodendrons, like the two that I just potted up. It also includes Epipernum, which is your standard golden pothos, or Spathophylla, which is Peacelies. There are so many 
plants in the uh, Araceae family. And that is a specific type of plant that would really appreciate this well-draining soil mixture that has this perlite added. You could even add some fine orchid bark as well and it would really enjoy it. But that's just going the extra mile. Today we're just taking it easy, as I said at the beginning of this video. So here we go. I am happy with how this looks. It's Monstera Stanleyana uh, variegata, and it's leaning a little bit as you can see, but once I get a moss pole and I put it in right here, uh, I think this plant's going to look incredible. So I am really thrilled to see how this plant's going to look in just like a growing season's time. So just a few months from now, I feel like this is going to be a beast of a plant. Of course, it stays very tight. So when I'm saying a beast of a plant, I probably mean no more than like a foot tall, but I'm just really excited about growing this plant. And I have a wonderful new leaf coming in right here, as you can see. So I'm really excited about that. All right, let's pick a plant that's not an aroid. Let's get a little bit of a different one up in here. Let's do this Pilea. I have this Pilea repens here. This is a fun little uh, fuzzy Pilea. It's very similar to like the um, Pilea spruciana, which is the Norfolk Pilea, I think they call it. And it's also kind of similar to uh, like the aluminum plant Pilea, which is Pilea cateri. So there's just so many Pileas and I'm learning to love them because they are just so incredible. So I'm just really obsessed with this green Pilea right here. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So let's go ahead and pick a planter. I have this white ceramic planter right here, which I think would actually look really good with this green. Ooh, this might be the winner here. I still also have this Berg's pot or the thicker terracotta pot, which would also look really good. Oh my goodness. Or I could even just do standard terracotta. I think this would look really good in, in plain terracotta. Actually, I, I, I think I'm gonna do the, the white. I think that there's something about just this like, I hate to say it, but like plain green looking plant and this white ceramic pot or cream, I guess it's very, it's a cream ceramic pot that just looks really, really good. We're gonna get our bucket and we need to get our soil off. Ooh, this is compacted. So Pileas have very, lacy, fine roots, I guess would be the good way to put it. If you look at this root system, it's very similar to like a fern. So it's, it's much finer. So I don't want to necessarily like shake off all of the soil like I was doing with the, the philodendron and the aroids, but I am going to kind of tear it open lightly from the bottom, which is going to allow some of that soil from the center because all of these roots are going around the outside of the pot and I just wanna kind of tease them a little bit. So just by tearing it from below, it allows some of that soil from the center to just fall out a little bit. And I'm also just going to very lightly just kind of press open the plant. You can see here how I'm doing this, just to let these roots know that they can venture out into the pot that they're gonna be going in because they have a lot more room now, or not too much more room. You don't wanna give your plants too much more room. Oh yeah, this is definitely the winner. Look at the way this is gonna look in here. This is just like phew, meant to be, totally meant to be. My only issue with these pots with the drain attached or the, the tray attached is that I always get soil stuck in here whenever I'm potting them. And the only way I can easily get them out is by blowing in it and I just get soil everywhere, which I mean, I'm generally making a mess when I am potting up my plants, but I can't just, tip it over into my bucket here because then all of my soil will just fall out. So that is just the one mess that really just has to happen um, in my experience. Alrighty, we are done planting up our Pilea repens and it is so beautiful in this white pot. I think it's just like, it's a match made in heaven. I think I already said that, but there's just no other way to put it. It's just, it's just the way it had to be. There's no other way this plant could have been potted up. It just looks so good. Alrighty, let's do one more. I'm running low on soil here, but I definitely have enough for one more plant. So let's do, Ooh, I really wanna plant something in this pot here. So we could do this Tradescantia Nanic. Oh, I also have some Hoya. I have this um, Hoya Breviolata right here. Oh, this would look really good. Oh no. Now we have to decide between the Hoya Breviolata and the Tradescantia Nanic. <sighs> so I think I like the way this looks better because the color is just like to die for with this pot. 
I mean, this is also fantastic. Like, don't get me wrong. Oh, gosh. This is so hard. Oh, gosh. I think we should do the Tradescantia. I think we should... We should take a chance. It is just so beautiful in this pot. I, I think I'm gonna be thrilled with it. Okay, let's do it. We're gonna plant the Tritoscanti in here and we're just gonna love it. We're gonna we're gonna love everything about it. All right, so let's, I'm gonna do the Hoya. I'm totally gonna do the Hoya. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. All right, so let's get all the soil. I just, I think it looks so good. I'm really loving the circular leaves here. They almost look like grapes if you look at it at a certain angle. And then with like the scalloped pot, I just think that just like, is perfect. So I think that is my final decision. We're doing the Hoya Braviolata in the in the fancy uh, terracotta pot. All right, so let's get these rice holes off. You can see some nice roots here for a Hoya. That's really nice. Sometimes when you get Hoyas, they're not heavily rooted. They just have like an inch of roots maximum, but this is, this is pretty nicely rooted. I'm, I'm very happy about this. This is looking fantastic. We got most of our soil up and a really healthy root system here. So let's go ahead and get our soil ready. Of course, we're gonna put a little bit of soil down in the bottom of our pot just to get started. And set our Hoya in. So I really like the way that this Hoya was kind of just like dangling off the side, but I do kind of want to pull it back just a little bit so that it has some stuff inside the pot as well because I do, I really like these pots, so I want it to be about what's in the pot as well and not what's just trailing out of the pot, if you if you get what I'm saying. I love the way this Hoya looks. It's so different than many of the other Hoyas that I grow in my home. It's got more of like an ant plant vibe to me, so I, I really enjoy that. All right, oh gosh, just blue soil everywhere. Okay, so this is our Hoya Breviolata inside this uh, heavy duty terracotta pot. So I'm really obsessed with the way this looks. This looks so good. Oh gosh, I'm so into this. Thank you all so much for joining me today as I repotted my plants. I clearly had a lot to repot and I still have a couple more, uh, but I gotta go ahead and get some more soil at this point and I might as well go get a few more pots while I'm at it since I used a couple of the pots that I had on hand. So you can always use more pots. That's something I've learned. Well, maybe I can't use any more plants at this point. Maybe a couple here and there. Uh, you can always use more pots. Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining me. Be sure to check out Centurion's Bucket, their collapsible bucket. As I said, I'll leave a link in my description below when it is for sale at Target. And do check out their other products as well. I really enjoy Centurion's products as an indoor gardener. It's something I really, really enjoy. Thank you again for watching. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.